Okay, folks, today I'm playing around a little bit with 2.7K Cinema in, um, with the GoPro Hero 3, and I'm also in Adobe Premiere Pro, the new uh, CC version of it, which I just downloaded today. So it's, it's slightly different than my Premiere Pro that I've been using the CS6, and I, I, one of the things I noticed right off the bat is I don't have a... Uh, a bar here that shows what my render uh, place will be. If you've, you see, you'll notice that's a little bit different, but that's not the point today. Um, what I'm just really showing is just some workflow with this 2.7K video. And I shot the two different kinds of it that the Hero 3 shoots. Um, here's my Hero 3 that I shot with yesterday. It shoots one that's 2.7K cinema. And the 2.7K cinema here, I'm going to click on one of the files, is 2704 by 1440. So it's a very large video. It shoots 23.976p uh, or 27.976 uh, frames per second. And so what I've done, uh, I, I'm assuming the CS6 version will handle this just as well. I have, I, I did pull one over into CS6 last night, not the C, uh, the uh, Premiere Pro. Uh, crap, what is it? CC, <laughs> CC now. Premiere Pro CC is what I'm using. But at any rate. It pulled it in no problem, and uh, it, the video scrubs just fine. I've got this turned up just a little bit too loud. Let me turn this back down. Uh, and it looks good. I wanted to do just a little bit of editing it just to see kind of what we're going to get as far as color and stuff goes. So it uh, looks like Premiere Pro handles this just fine. Uh, when you go to export it, I exported a, a, a small, like about a one-minute clip of it just a minute ago to YouTube, and YouTube took the video at 24 frames per second or 23.976, whatever it is. And it did take the, I'm going to pull my YouTube over here just for a second. We'll take a look at it. Here is the test that I put up. And uh, if you go here and click, it will show original size. And so let's check that. I watched the 1080p version. Let's look at original and see what happens. Let's see how hard it is for YouTube to stream that. Oh, I've just never had much use for it. I'm here in downtown Valde. You know, you see kind of the street behind me here. It's prettier that way. And so this is just a small little clip of the video, the whole video that I'm going to put out a little bit later on talking about a 2.7K video. Uh, it looks like YouTube will handle the 2.7K. You can upload it at your 24 frames per second uh, setting. And then you'll have all these different renditions here that YouTube will do with that. I'm going to pull this aside for a second. I have a second screen over here. Uh, so let's see, one of the things I was really wondering about was, you know, could you be watching video with this mode and do a stop on it? 24 frames per second when I shoot off my Canon camera, sometimes I get rolling shutter, sometimes I get motion blur. Uh, I've also tried this with some Sony cameras, same kind of deal. Let's see what we get with the GoPro Hero 3 if we do some stop action on these moving cars. So here is a, here's a car moving it, and we'll show you what it looks like in real time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt I hit my tilt key I've got this selected I'm gonna hit the tilt key and it'll show. So we can see here I'm gonna go back a frame at a time. I don't see any motion blur with that. That looks pretty darn sharp. That's some of the best 24p video I've seen. Just everything's crisp a nice crisp little uh, nice crisp frame every single one of them. So apparently the Hero 3 does not suffer from that. I, I will say this as I've been kind of mo moving, I have to hit the tilt key again to get out of this. Boom, there we go. As I've been rolling around editing on this, uh, I've not really seen the rolling shutter effect at all either as I walk. I've got some, some video here where I'm just walking it down the street. It's because, you know, let's face it, everything here. I've done some panning back and forth, left and right. I've not seen that either. I did want to see this cinema setting that GoPro has. What can we do as far as brightness, contrast, saturation? What can we pull out of this and without it starting to look artificial? So uh, I did just a minute ago add brightness contrast to this. I'll just take it off for a second so we can just do the workflow properly. So let's say I want to take this piece of video here and add brightness contrast to it. I've typed bright over here and I've just pulled it over here onto the piece of video. I'm also going to do fast color. Fast color corrector is right here. So I'm going to pull that over onto this. So let's see what we can do with this piece of video here to make it look a little nicer. Uh, for one thing, it probably does need to be brightened a bit. So I'm going to go into brightness and contrast. I'm going to twirl down my uh, controls here. Brighten a little. Every time I brighten, I also add a little bit of contrast just because it seems to make the video look better. And you see I'm losing a little bit up here in the top. If I turn this off, 
there's some clouds there. Maybe I want to keep those. So maybe I should not have done that so much. Okay. I look a little washed out in this video even before the brightness and contrast is added. Cancel. Let's cancel that. So I'm going to add a little bit of hue saturation or a little bit of saturation on this. I'll go over here. Let's bump that up just a bit. About 118. So it looks like the video will handle some color grading. So great. I mean, it looks like it edits just as easy. Uh, I'm going to hit Control Save to save this or Control S and save it. Looks like it edits just as easy as any other piece of video, the 2.7K, and it works just what or just fine here in Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. And this is the CC version I'm using. Let's export. I'll show you what I did to export this a while ago to get a pretty good piece of video. I did. Uh, okay, I have my timeline selected. I'll say File Export Media, and uh, I have the setting that I used just a minute ago, which I've customized it just a little bit. Uh, what I did, I had H.264 selected, and when I go over here to video, it does have a thing that says match source now that you can click on for H.264. I'm glad they've done this. I don't think this is in the CS6 regular version. So if you click that, and, and which I did, it automatically goes to 2704 by 1440, 23.976 uh, frames per second, progressive, square pixels, all the things that you need there. The only thing left for you to do is decide how big you want it to be. So that whole piece of the clip there I rendered a while ago at 24 megs per second to 26. I did that's a little higher than I would usually do with 1080p video because there's a lot more data there. So it looked like it, it ran just fine, exported a while ago. Um, you know, I, I'm not, not going to say a whole lot more about workflow with Premiere Pro. It looks like Premiere Pro handles it really well. You can export it and it looks like YouTube will take the video when you upload it. And, uh, and keep it at 2.7K when you go up. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to export two videos, one that's 2.7K cinema, which is what this is, which is slightly different size. I'm going to hit cancel for now. Then I'm going to do another one, which is at uh, right this other setting, which is just 2.7K out of the GoPro Hero 3. And if you look up here at the top, it says it is 2704 by 1536, and it's at 2997 uh, uh, frames per second. So it is a larger form of video as far as pixels this way, same this way, but it's larger this way. So we'll do a test. If you look over here at this YouTube a video where I uploaded the 2.7K cinema, you'll notice there's some black here, right? There's some black here. So I'm wondering if I do the 2.7K, not the cinema mode, will it fill all this in? I'm betting it will. So I'm guessing 2.7K is like uh, 1080p only blown up at a proper aspect. So this is more like I guess what you'd have in a theater. Um, you probably want to go to GoPro site and see what it is, you know, why they've given you the cinema version. Maybe it is just something that they've done they think will transfer uh, better over into, uh, you know, a cinematic type look or cinematic type setup for screens. The one thing I did notice, is I, and you'll see it in the video when I do this, is that the only thing you get is the wide angle of view. You do not get medium of view. You do not get a narrow field of view at all. All you've got is wide. So if this wide thing bothers you here, then this may not be uh, the video setting you want to use. Uh, it's pretty cool. It looks nice. I would love to have medium field of view in that. And um, I make mention in the video, I'll make mention of it here as well, that... Uh, I have read rumors, and not rumors, I've read the, um, you know, the kind of hints at what's coming with Hero 4, which I don't know when it's going to come out. It might come out the end of this year, might come out early next year, who knows. But I've heard that the, that the new one will have a different chip in it. I know that right now you can get 4K video at 15 frames per second with the GoPro Hero 3. Uh, with the new one, I'm thinking they're going to go to 4K video at 30 frames per second, which will be pretty awesome. And uh, so the, I would assume then that 2.7K video, like what we're seeing here, will be uh, at that point available in different fields of view and also at different frame rates. So instead of just 24 and 30, I imagine they'll go at least to 48. And it's just me knowing, knowing GoPro and, and kind of their patterns. Uh, if we had 60 frames per second, 2.7, wow, that would be amazing. But I'm guessing at least 48. And, uh, you know, I don't work for GoPro. I just know kind of what their trends and development and what that new, uh, I think it's an Exmor chip, 
is going to allow them to do, and I might be wrong on the name of that chip, so don't jump, don't flog me, folks. But I know there is a new chip coming for the GoPro Hero 4, which who knows when it's going to happen, but I'm sure we'll see improved 2.7K and everything else as well. Probably, I think I had read that we might even get 1080p at 120 frames per second. 720p maybe at 240, which if you want to shoot some really awesome like hummingbird wings in, in flight or something like that, that'll be fantastic. So GoPro Hero 3 continues to impress me. Uh, it looks like it edits really well with, uh, with Adobe Premiere Pro uh, CS6 CC. This is the CC version that I just downloaded today. Looks pretty sweet, folks. I might do a review and show you, tell you some things about what I, my feelings are about the CC version next. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye-bye.